Hello everyone, I am Veos, and welcome back to another video. This is the colony colonization uh, building series of the Let's Play. So let's just dive right into it, shall we? Before we set course for Duna, I used the little uh, I used the little engineering podcraft to go around and start tying things down, like the solar panels and the communication uh, radiators and things of this nature. Once all of that was said and done, I put the engineering pod back into the front. I was thinking about leaving it on the side since I had uh, I had a little claw that I attached to so it could attach on the side, but um, I was afraid of um, the weight being a little off, so I just put it, put it right on the front again uh, before we burned into Duna orbit. After burning into Duna orbit, I took the engineering pod back off, attached it to the side because of the fact that I needed to get the satellites and the rovers out. And in order to do that, I didn't want to lose the engineering pod because it's actually a very useful craft. Oh, I am um, <laughs> by accident, I had drained all of the monopropellant out of the main monopropellant tanks. So I thought I had screwed myself over pretty good until I realized that the pod itself had a little bit of monopropellant inside of it that I had um, turned off, thank goodness. And so I was able to use that to um, dock it to the side of the craft. Whoops. And so the long, tedious process of putting the satellites into Duna orbit began. Um, I want to try to keep it so that, you know, you need communications in order to run um, automated craft. Still learning on how that works, actually, because sometimes sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I'm like, you know, what, what, what do you want, KSP? What do you want besides my blood and soul? But uh, eventually we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, until then... Um, because of the fact that this is somewhat experimental, if things start to bug out, I will go into settings and I'll switch the need, need comms connection control or whatever. I'll switch that off until I can figure out what it is that the game uh, thinks it needs in order to have that actually work. But um, so, so for the most part, the communication dishes went off without a hitch. I was able to put them into a pretty close orbit within each other so they won't drift too badly over time now, they'll eventually drift to the point where they'll either meet up or be far away but it's going to take a long time since they're almost exactly in the 
the exact same apogee and perigee. Using the onboard ore scanner, we went ahead and scanned for ore to make sure that uh, wherever it is that we were going to land at had enough ore to um, sustain the colony. Now, the this one right here uh, that you're seeing in front of you, I, I was trying to figure out. I was trying to figure out how it worked, and to be honest, I still don't know how the freaking thing works, other than. It does, it does the exact same thing, I guess, the, the giant ore thing does, but it's, it's more specific. And, uh, I was kind of hoping it would show me some flat ground. You know, so, so I had, like, an option or something to show me level terrain. That was, that was wishful thinking on my part. So unfortunately the first rover was lost in orbit because uh, as I was trying to look for a spot to land I was um, time warping way too much and the battery drained. The battery is very large so for me to drain the battery uh, first go was somewhat of a really really bad mistake on my part. Now that I think about it I could have F9'd it and gone back. But the problem is I had not had I had not saved um, I had not saved at all and during the whole darn thing I don't believe I did anyway and so hitting F9 would have shot me all the way back to Kerbin which I really do I really wasn't in the mood to redo all that stuff all over again so um, the rover is forever lost until it's reclaimed one day in the future The second rover was more smooth. Um, I definitely saved this time, so if I screwed up, I could just go back. Um, the The only problem was that the landing was a little rough. I, I made it, everything was fine. Smashed the box up a little bit, but it, it, it survived. And so we were able to use it to look for a flat ground, which in KSP uh, is very, very hard to find. It's out there. It's out there, but it's very, very hard to find. And of course, let's not forget the horribly buggy robotic parts that when you um, put it a radial symmetry using some sort of um, like, for instance, the rover I used radial symmetry in order to duplicate one on the other end of the craft when I was putting it inside the uh, cargo bay. And of course it fucked the robotic uh, hinges that were on there. There were hinges? Were they called hinges? Um, yeah, something like that. Anyway, so the I had to manually go in there and try to get everything right. Uh, when it comes to the unfolding uh, part of the, the rover. Which was fun because of the fact that I didn't know what the hell was going on until I noticed that when I hit the, the action group to make everything unfold beautifully like it's supposed to, it unfolded really badly. And I was like, what is going on? And then I realized it's that bug. And so uh, I, I, it fi I fixed it. I fixed it. It works now, but damn.
Well, finally, after a very long time, uh, I found a relatively large piece of land that was pretty flat. And so I was very happy about that. And so when we finally go ahead and land the factory lander, hopefully we can nail it either on top of the rover or, you know, on, you know, in its general area or somewhere close to where we could possibly move uh, everything up to the rover. The ro the lander can't, the, la bleh, the landers don't have wheels, but I could imagine that I would, I, I would use uh, engineer engineers to be able to just kind of maybe uh, put it on like landing gears or something and have something tow it to that location or something of that nature. Well, we'll, we'll find out. We'll find out in the next video. So everyone, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being a part of this channel. I am Veos, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.